Hey everybody, so I'm finally getting around to the acoustic guitar vlog that people have asked for. Uh, I do get a lot of emails about the acoustic guitar, so I'm finally, finally getting around to actually doing it. So just like the last one I did on Cajon, I want to show what I'm actually doing in the studio with the microphones, and we'll go inside and we'll see what I'm actually doing in the mix with the plugins and things like that. Uh, and true to form, I'm drinking a little Bouchon. Mm, it's just so damn good. So, let's talk a little bit about the acoustic guitar. Um, first of all, it kind of goes without saying that you need a good player and a good guitar to get a good sounding acoustic guitar. Uh, it's not just about performance, it's about the way they actually play it as well. Uh, you can get a great player on a shitty acoustic and with whatever microphones, and it's probably still going to sound pretty good because that's just how a great player works. So. Um, those, those are things that go without saying, but of course I have to make a quick mention of it. Also, I want to get kind of a dead sound. I have an actual booth here uh, that I'm actually kind of surrounding myself in to get a little bit of the room noise out. And I'm actually in a studio, so it actually sounds pretty good, but I still want to get that out of my microphones because once I get into my microphones, I'm pretty much stuck with it. So I'd rather get something a little more dry and I can manipulate it a little easier inside the mix. So uh, in this case, I'm going to be using two microphones to get a stereo sound for the Boyce Avenue stuff. Uh, the reason for that is that their acoustic songs, usually the main guitars, or the, the main instrument is the acoustic guitar. And I want that to fill up as much space as possible. So a good stereo sound. Now if it was a, a song with a bunch of drums and the acoustic guitar was more of just a texture buried instrument, I'd probably just take one microphone set it near the sound hole straight ahead, eight to 10 inches away and call it a day. But in this case, I'm gonna use two. I'm gonna use these Audio-Technica 5045s that I used on the Cajon. Great microphones, I've been really, really happy with them. And um, we're gonna use those in two different spots here. So the first one I have is pointed at the sound hole above my shoulder basically. And this is about 18 to 20 inches away. And I have another one closer down here by my ankle and my calf area, and that's pointing towards the sound hole, and again, that's 18 to 20 inches away. Now, both of these are pretty far from each other, a good three feet or so. That's great because it's gonna eliminate my phasing, but if I'm in a, an acoustic space that's not very favorable, I will end up picking up more of that, which could be problematic in the mix. Uh, so those are things to remember when you're micing your, your guitar. Now this microphone technique may not work for you, especially if you're in a room that's not very well acoustically treated. And in that case, I would try uh, some of the more traditional microphone techniques, including maybe just one and doubling the guitar to get more of a stereo sound. Um, now I think that pretty much covers all of what I wanted to talk about out here in the studio. So let's go ahead and we'll go inside the um, Inside, we'll look at Pro Tools and we'll see what I'm actually doing in the mix. All right, so let's. Uh, here we are in the Pro Tools session for the Boyce Avenue cover of The Greatest by Sia. Uh, I did use this song for the Cajon vlog, if, um, if you watched that one. And um, this one's got two acoustic guitars in it. One is a classical, the other is just a regular acoustic. That would be these two guys up here. Let me play those both for you real quick. So that's our classical there, and then the regular guitar. And um, one thing you'll notice about this performance on this regular guitar is that um, Alejandro is playing with his fingers um, uh, throughout the whole thing. So when he strums up here in the chorus, he's using his finger, his fingernail and his finger to strum back and forth, and he's not using a pick. And a lot of performances, he actually does that, uh, and he's actually really good at it. So uh, Alonjo is a really great guitar player, really makes my job easy. So it's um, it's pretty easy to, to record and work with his, his tracks. So let's take a look at um, what I'm doing on this acoustic guitar. We'll listen to two different sections. We'll kind of listen to some of the finger plucking chord stuff that he's doing, and then we'll do some of the strumming stuff in, in the chorus. So let me take off the reverb and all the plugins, and let's just see what that sounds like. One other thing too you might notice is that um, on this 
I don't have it panned straight uh, left and right. I have it panned um, a bit to um, a bit to the left, and then you'll notice on the classical, I have that one panned a bit to the right. So they both kind of are uh, a little bit. They're not quite straight up in the middle. They're both a little bit panned uh, left and right. Let's take a listen to this guy without the plugins. And let's listen to the chorus. Cool, let's just put them all on without the reverb. So let's take a look at what we're doing with the plugins. Now, I'm using this Slate Virtual Mix Rack. Um, I'm using this virtual channel, which is set to the the Brit 4KE, which is their emulation of the SSL uh, 4K. Um, not really doing much from the default settings. And um, and then I'm using this knee plugin, and uh, it looks like I'm just boosting a little bit of 300. I moved it, but it was at 399 and uh, at one and a half dB and it looks like I'm rolling off from 41 Hertz on down so that's not making a huge impact but let's just go ahead and I'm gonna play it from this this back end back here so um, just a little bit of that low mid is being accentuated and then you know you're getting a little bit of that harmonic distortion coming from this um, this virtual channel and um, let's see what's next our uh, the waves um, Fairchild plugin which is called Poig Child part of the Jack Joseph Poig collection I hopefully that's how you pronounce his last name this is a really cool compressor I use this quite a bit on stuff it emulates the Fairchild and um, I don't think it sounds a lot like the Fairchild. I think the Fairchild, it's not quite as transparent as this, but I do like the way this sounds. Uh, so let's kind of take a look at what, what we're doing here. So at the beginning of the song here, uh, not a whole lot, just a little bit of compression. Then we start hitting it harder when things get a little more dynamic. dynamic. So we start hitting a little bit heavier back here, and um, I, I like what it's doing to the low end. It's I feel like it's helping control some of that, and um, some of the dynamics happening with the with those lower frequencies. I feel like it's helping control this. I have the time constant set to two on here, um, which is a little bit slower of a release. Uh, so I'll usually go between one and two depending on the performance in the song, uh, but I usually never uh, use three, four, five, or six. And um, uh, usually it's just stuck on, on one or two. I feel like, just to touch on this a little bit more, I feel like one, it feels, you're getting that same, you're getting the compression, but it feels a bit more dynamic, whereas two feels a little less dynamic and a little more smoother overall. Um, and it really depends on the song. So half the time I'll use one, half the other time I'll use two. It's just, just how I feel about it when I'm mixing. So the next plug I'm using is this SSL channel strip. I'm not really doing anything on this, so sometimes I end up putting plugins into into the chain and I may not even touch them or I end up dialing back some settings and they still end up being active. Although I am rolling off 67 hertz, so it's not really doing a lot. I'm just gonna, we're just gonna skip that one. Uh, one of my favorite plugins is this Wave C1 uh, compressor sidechain. I love this thing, I use this on a lot of stuff and I did use it on that Cajon sub if, um, if you watch that one as well. I've got this set to 203 hertz, and let's just go ahead and listen to it. Mm -hmm. 
So you can see I'm hitting quite a bit down here uh, between 5 and 7 dBs in some spots at that 200 hertz. And I'm just going to solo what I'm actually doing. So you can hear exactly what frequency I'm going after. And to me, that just it cleans up a lot of the bottom end and it makes it just a lot smoother sounding. And I'm doing another one uh, up here at uh, almost one and a half uh, K. So this one is a little more subjective, kind of more suited to style and taste, I think. You know, this is helping with some of the dynamics on those initial hits and some of that mid-range stuff where I, I want to leave a little bit of room for my vocals. So uh, I'm trying to duck some of the some of that action out of this so we get um, so I get the you know a little bit more room for the vocals to breathe. Let's move on. We're using track plug next, which is the Wave Arts. EQ. I use this a lot for notch filtering, which I did use this on the Cajon uh, subgroup as well. And um, let's see what that's at, look at 200 hertz, minus 11 uh, dBs, and the really, really notched on that. You'll see, as you can hear on this, this is just pulling some more of that 200 hertz out. Uh, 200 hertz, I think, is my nemesis because everything I touch, I end up notching out 200 hertz in one way or another. So on this guitar, though, it does have a, quite a bit of buildup down there. And pulling some of this stuff out in this area just helps clean up instruments sometimes. And in this in this case, it's, it's definitely helping clean this up. You're still hearing low end, you know, over here but you're getting rid of this buildup stuff that's right in this area. So let's take a look at here. And here's another EQ that I'm using, which is the Waves Parametric EQ. And this is another great EQ that you can do some really good notch filtering with. And as you can see, I'm doing four different notches here and a little bit of bump here. But let's take a listen to this one. So again, this is sort of playing off of what I was doing with this one and, and the C1 and um, just kind of smoothing out some of those frequencies that just I felt were popping out. And this helps some of this helps clean up um, some space for this classical guitar down here as well. So um, let's actually play that together. And then I'll, be, I'll bypass this. Yeah, I, that's wow. That just feels great to me when I when I bring this in because it just they now they feel a lot more separated. So, uh, oh, and uh, reverb. Yeah, let's take a listen to that. A lot of times I'm going to use this reverb here with some minor adjustments to it, which is this SSL X verb, and it's a play. I don't re remember the original factory, you know, preset that I used and then manipulated this one, um, but for the most part, I have I have this saved under my presets as an acoustic plate, um, and then I'll just make some minor adjustments to this uh, per song. Sometimes I use a little bit longer reverb, or I may even throw some delay on it if, if maybe a part that needs it. Um, the classic guitar is actually longer reverb, but still an SSL. See, that's one, this one here. So much bigger with the 60 meter size and 1.2 decay. Uh, let's go back to the uh, the other acoustic guitar 
but you can see here, uh, so I am using this plate setting. I'm using a 29 meter size, uh, one second decay time. A uh, little bit of this early re reverb, or early reflections, pardon me. Just kind of go through these settings so you can kind of take a look at them. Reverb, I'm, what I'm doing here with the roll-offs and the filters. And I, it looks like I've got a little bit, I'm ducking a little bit of the mid-range off of this as well. Uh, I'll do that from time to time, just depending on the song. And in this case, I think I probably did that because um, maybe I was just getting too much buildup um, in that area for some of these reverbs where the cajon is, you know, using um, a smaller room reverb. Uh, and then you've got this other acoustics that's using you know, a reverb vocals, and sometimes they just end up getting a little built up. So I probably just pulled that just to kind of get them out of the way. And with some of those smaller room reverbs like this, um, you can get sometimes, I want to put a lot on there because I want it to sound like a space, but I don't want it to sound too boxy sounding or just a little too roomy sounding. So sometimes ducking some of those mid frequencies like that can help, you know, make it a little more separated. So let's listen. Yeah, and if you listen, right when I kill it too, kind of get an idea of what that room sounds like. So uh, I think that kind of covers everything. Well, uh, hopefully this video has helped, uh, you know, with any questions about what I'm doing acoustic guitar wise. You know, this is going to change. These settings were going to change a lot. Uh, you know, a lot of these, I may use these same plugins a lot on on, this, on different songs, but, you know, the settings that I'm doing will change from song to song. One thing's for sure, I'm going to be cutting 200 hertz no matter what song it is. You know, again, that's that's with the guitar, that's with the playing. So there's a lot of factors in there. So if you're watching this and you're like, wow, I need to cut 200 hertz on my guitars, I, you know, go easy. Don't, uh, don't go crazy. Uh, really, use your ears, listen to what's happening you know, before you start um, just recklessly uh, notch filtering and compressing frequencies. So uh, anyway, I hope you like the video. I hope hopefully it helps. And, um, you know, leave any comments or questions that you have below. Thanks.